in as we delve into the heart of our summit's content. It's time to dissect the current sales landscape and gain a very comprehensive understanding of the industry dynamics. Our first session of the day is dedicated to industry sales analysis report. We're starting from the very base of foundation, which is the data. So with this, in this very rapidly evolving market, staying informed about the industry trends, consumer behavior, and competitive forces is essential for strategic decision making. Our expert presenter of this session will take us through a comprehensive analysis of the sales landscape, providing insights that will equip us with the valuable tools for success. Dr. Kishore Dungana, Associate Professor and Director of the Graduate Program. His responsibility encompasses the oversight of the MBA program and instructions in subjects, including marketing management, promotional management, consumer behavior, service marketing, business development planning. Having dedicated over two decades to this career, our Dr. Uh, Kishore Dungana has cultivated a wide range of skill sets that spans areas such as finance, leadership, management, banking, and human relation. Upcoming next is our first session for the Industry Sales Analysis Report. Please put your hands together with a warm welcome for Dr. Kishore Dungana. Uh, thank you, Rachaji. Namaskar. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's really a great pleasure to be here today uh, in this sales summit. Uh, I have been given a Herculean task of uh, setting a mood for the all frontline warrior of the uh, Nepa Nepa Nepalese business uh, fraternity. Uh, good morning once again to the respected uh, guests and the dignitaries and all the participants. So the <coughs> ta uh, slide changer. So it's a very rapid round of uh, analysis has been done by us, and I'm going to uh, delve you through certain things which we could really find from the Nepalese uh, business industry. Uh, certain things you may not find, but many things, whatever we could cover, we have tried to cover. But before that. I really have a challenge on uh, setting the mood because it goes along with the, uh, our theme that staying ahead in difficult times. I found myself in difficulty that should I talk about difficult times or staying ahead? Tell me what I'm supposed to talk. I know it's a difficult time, but staying ahead is more important. And being a salesperson for a long period of time, and still I feel I'm also a salesperson and many things being said by the uh, Mr. Mohan Oja, uh, CEO of the uh, Goat Seller. Definitely, I mean, uh, he has taken away uh, many words which I was supposed to talk, uh, but still, I mean, it's all about setting a mood. So first of all, I would like to start with a question to all of you that are you a salesperson or a salesman? Many of us say yes, but are you a proud salesman? Yes. That is the true sense that, I mean, if you really feel proud of your profession, then only you really can lead uh, your entire life and bring happiness in you, you in, in your customer and in your family members. That's where we need to understand. And many of us still have got a, a doubt about, uh, should I call myself a salesperson? They try to give a different name, then I am an executive of the company, then I look after a certain department, these kind of things uh, they talk. But basically, if you really understand the importance of salesperson, if you see the top line of any business, who brings it? It's a sales. Who brings it? It's a sales. So that's why what I believe is that, okay, the truth is everybody is a salesperson in this whole world. So everyone sells something. Everyone is in business for him or herself. Basically, we talk about the salesperson who sells goods and services to the customers. But if you go home, as a parents, we sell values and wisdom to our children. Then the teacher sells knowledge to the students. Then the doctor sells skill, advice, and comfort to the patients. The actor sells entertainment to the audiences. And we all love it. Okay, the politician sells dream to their voters. Whether dreams is going to get come true or not, that's a different story. So on and so forth. You can keep on adding all these things. And I believe 
that this, in this world world, we all are in the same business. It's a paradoxical statement. But I believe that we all are in the same business, that is putting smiles on others' face. If we could do that, the customers will put their hand on pocket, take it out, and then give it to us. Otherwise, it is not. But the responsibility being given to me is not only about talking these things. I have been given a responsibility of talking about the business ahead, okay? So let's start that. Before that, I mean, I would like to talk a little on this thing uh, as a mantra, I will always take it, okay? Act of selling is simple, but it's not easy. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry cannot really take it away. I mean, take it, carry it forward. Uh, then the entire selling process is quite complex, understanding the mood of your target customer, setting their mood, and then converting them according to your need and then making them to take action what you want. That is the really, I mean, complex process, but it is not complicated. We really can learn. And that's why I've been given a responsibility of setting a mood that I think this session is really going to add a lot of value on you. And after completion of this, you will emerge as a, another better salesperson than what you were before joining this program. This is my belief. So let's talk about a few things, what really is happening in our industry. I would like to start with the banking and financial industry, BFI. So uh, from our quick round of I mean, analysis, what we found is that during the time of uh, COVID, the growth rate of the uh, gross income of the finance institution has really gone down. But still, it is positive throughout the period. And after that, it is really uh, rising up. But now it is leveling and then showing not a required growth as it has, it is being expected. And there are several reasons um, behind that. Basically, our banking industry is uh, really, I mean, uh, face the challenges from the liquidity. And liquidity crisis is a common phenomenon. Sometimes it is plus, sometimes it is scarce. That is the thing. And right now, I, as far as I have uh, gathered the information that the banking industry are having money, but the borrowers are not in a position to take money because of the business environment. So that is the present scenario. And let's hope that, I mean, uh, it is going to get improved in next, uh, I, mean I mean, in future. So let's talk about the insurance industry, one of the grooming, uh, I mean, one of the booming industry. Many insurance companies came, realized that, then now market is really taking uh, a shape. Uh, their uh, premium collection growth trend is uh, really declining because uh, we do not take insurance as a, uh, I mean, really a serious matter to be done and then paying installments, we delay or many times people uh, start stopping paying the uh, premiums and uh, for the household appliances and other uh, fixed assets also we stop doing the insurances. So the growth rate, actually it's all about the growth rate. The growth rate is declining in the uh, insurance premium collection and we have covered the uh, life and non-life insurance, both uh, premiums over here. Then let's talk about the fintech industry, quite interesting. These days, I mean, who does not use, uh, I mean, the, uh, this fintech means the wallet, uh, the mobile phone wallet. We all use it. And it has really shown a tremendous growth in the market. Uh, during the pandemic period, people were in houses and then they have used a lot. That time, the sales, we could get uh, data only for the three years. So that's why it, uh, the 2007-79 is comparison with the 2000. 77, 78, that's why there is a tremendous growth in the overall transaction of the uh, mobile wallet. So there, uh, it, it has shown the 61.05%, but it has still positive, but has declined to 19.27% because of the volume of it, but it still it has got a potentiality to grow, and then the industry, people are really taking, uh, I mean, making payments through the mobile payment. All of us are very much familiar. There are some of the companies where I have an opportunity to interact. Their overall, I mean, the um, revenue is being collected through uh, online payment is 70% and 30% is gas. Isn't that uh, amazing revolution is happening in our payment system? So that's where we see the opportunity and we are embarking in a next uh, level. 
And then uh, internet service provider industry. Uh, previously, if we really talk about the internet service, uh, generally we used to have in offices. And then uh, at home, we were not having internet services. But slowly, gradually, the internet started to grow in a very rapid way. And it has shown a very good, I mean, uh, uh, growth, uh, positive growth uh, during the period on a number of subscribers. Number of subscribers is still in increasing trend. Uh, however, if you talk about the sales revenue, gross sales revenue of the industry, it is the growth rate is in declining trend because of the economies of scale in the companies. And then if you really understand, go back and see individually that the amount we used to pay is becoming lesser. That I mean, we are getting better service in a lower prices if you really compare to the past. And that's how, I mean, the industry's revenue is decreasing. Another thing is that there are a lot of, I mean, the new player came into the market as a market challenger, and then they are uh, creating a price war. If you really see in the market, there is a price war, and the price has declined substantially uh, in the market. So there is a still a positive growth, but the growth rate is not as the number of subscribers. And here, one thing we must appreciate that these internets are reaching to the nook and every nook and corner of the country. That I mean, in the small villages also, these companies are penetrating and going into depth and then trying to provide uh, internet services, though they are generating profit, but it is really going to bring the changes in our society. So that's where, uh, and it can be used in a very positive way. So this is one of the industry, very interesting industry. Uh, construction service industry, because it relates with so many other things, and uh, here uh, it's a, uh, having I an mean, up and down side of thing during the COVID period, it had gone down, then again going up. Uh, now, I mean, the growth is, uh, the growth rate, I mean, positive growth is there, but uh, still, I mean, it is not as in the past. Basically, it is about, it is because of the, this industry is related with the government decision on infrastructure development. The more amount goes and comes from that area. So that's where when the government takes a major decision to implement certain uh, infrastructure projects, uh, the industry will go up. And this industry is really facing a problem of the payment delays. And we all know that they are hesitated, they are, they are in a uh, under protest. Uh, you all know that, and if some of you might be here who are in this industry. And then there is a sort of labors. Uh, we all know that that's an irony of our country that many people are going out of our country. And because of that region, uh, there is a shortage of labor. And then the project delays because of political and then a lot of the natural things. We face so many difficulties while completing the projects. That is also another challenge these industries facing. Let's talk about the automobile industry. I had been to this industry for maybe around six, seven years. And I understand that uh, this is one of the very uh, tricky business where uh, external externalities are uh, having a lot of impact. And during this time, if we really see uh, they, these industry has declined drastically if you compare share year to year. And there are many layoffs. If, I don't know, I mean, some of you are that from that industry are not here, but there are many layoffs, and they are not being able to sell it because uh, the government banned import of vehicles for a certain period of time. Because of that thing also, they are not being able to sell. And after that, when they opened it, uh, the industry is not, the, I mean, the whole market is not that positive to uh, purchase vehicles because the financial institutions are not supporting in the way they want it. And right now, because of the economic uh, mindset of the people, the vehicle industry is not growing. But I decided to take a different look on an electric vehicle because it is showing a different trend. So there is a tremendous growth in the use of electric vehicle and the market share of the passenger car has been taken by the electric vehicles. And this is benefiting few of the companies who are uh, I mean, who are, who are bringing in the uh, electric vehicles. So this is the scenario. Uh, how many times I have to, is it, I'm, am I taking more time? I really don't know, okay, I mean, yeah, yes, okay. So let's talk about the FMCG industry. Uh, do not take it otherwise. What I really found difficult in case of this industry is that 
getting data from the industry is very, very difficult. And in our country, that the country's data, I mean, the company's data are not available. I really don't know. It's a very simple thing that how much you sold during a year to be declared in a market, does it make any difference? I really don't know. I try to find out many companies' data, but somehow with the personal relations in our team that we could collect some of the major industries in Nepal and some published data, and somehow we could reach to this level to measure that. That's why it may not be exactly representative of the FMCG industry, because as a researcher, we must uh, accept that the limitations. But whatever we could do that, okay, but during the pandemic uh, period, so it has definitely gone down, but it is a ever needed product, but despite of that, it has uh, gone down uh, because of the supply chain management, because it was not being supplied as it was required to. Then sharp growth during the time after the, I mean, opening of the entire market, and now it has, it is showing a little decline on their sales. But the companies are really doing good, and then this industry is still has got a very good potentiality. And then I do hope that many of you are representing from these kind of industries where sales team is the key <coughs> people who basically work on a from the company side on a trade marketing. But if you are from the dealer and then other distribution channels, then you have to work even in a uh, consumer side too. So it depends where you really work. But this is very interesting to know that. If you have got a capacity to understand consumer needs, uh, you can come out with a different sort of products and then convince them to uh, buy your product. Hospitality industry, okay. Silver lining on a whole environment. It is showing a tremendous growth. I think I mean, this is a clap for it, okay, I mean. Because during the time of COVID, it suffered a lot, but after that, the, the sales revenue of this industry is going very rapidly and it is further ex I mean, expected to grow provided the externalities does not disturb it because we really don't know I mean, what is going to happen in the future. But if go things go in this way, this industry is really going to have and many other new hotels, the rooms are coming in, so it is going to add value, I mean, sorry, add uh, in the overall industry size, so this is going to increase. Now, airlines industry, here also we found a very uh, tough time. That's why we have taken the passenger movement trend. Because if we relate with the passenger movement trend, then this is going to represent the sales turnover of the company. This is how, what we thought because of the availability of data. And then it is in rising trend. The people flying these days becoming uh, not a luxury, uh, become a compulsion. And because of the road condition also, it really helps us a lot to take these routes uh, and the, the overall industry is growing. So this is where, I mean, positive note. Uh, then education industry. This is the industry analysis last but not the least. Okay, so here, I mean, I, am, I came from that industry then. Many things I really can talk about, but very quickly I would like to go that. We have taken it from the 2007 to 71. So there was a, there, I mean, they started to decline this industry and if you ask me, if you go to the data, the number of students enrollment during that time and today, that is better, I mean, that is bigger, that is more than today's enrollment. And this industry is really suffering a lot. Uh, many factors are there, but the clearly seen uh, factor is the, I mean, students going out for, I mean, going out of the country for a study. And we're talking about the higher education industry, which is, above bachelor's level, uh, bachelor's levels, levels and above, because school and plus two, uh, they are doing good in our country, and it is related with the population growth, and this is how, I mean, uh, uh, this industry is not suffering a lot, but higher education, we really have got a challenge, and then it is not really performing well. So, uh, few information I would like to share that, okay, last year only 1,14,000 students took no objection certificate to go abroad, and this actually covers only for the students going third countries. Whoever goes to India, this, this figure doesn't speak about that. And approximately 400,000 students we used to get for the um, bachelor's level, and if you are taking 25, 30% students abroad, then these industries are having really a tough time. Very good, okay, thank you. 
And there are not only issues with, with that, okay? I mean, the academy institutions, the universities are also supposed to upgrade themselves according to the need of the time. And the quality of education being provided also has to be taken into consideration, having a very good relationship with the industry. This is what we have been focusing all the time wherever I work, but overall industry has to have that kind of mindset that welcoming industry people and then well, industry people also actually they are preparing ingredient, they are preparing raw material for you because we all came from that industry, but now we say that the academic institution is not doing good. Actually, I mean, we also came from there. So that's why we need to have a collaborative approach for having all these things. So this is where I really would like to highlight with this fraternity and then uh, please collaborate with the academic institution so you are going to get a good people on board and then your organizations are going to uh, do better. Before leaving, the industry analysis is over. So a few tips I would like to give uh, being a salesperson. Focus on value. Why someone should buy from us? And value has a three legs. It should resonate, it must differentiate, and it must substantiate what you have said. Value means, why should I buy from you? Why should I act now? That has to be decided, that has to be internalized by all of you. Okay, I'm seeing 440. Yeah, the right? Okay. Then develop multiple champions in team. So in your team, you really have to more champions than develop existing account. So grow existing account. We focus on a new account and then ignore whatever you, we have got. So that is what you are supposed to do. And I have written three targets. I think, I mean, if you, all, I mean, most of us are salesperson here. Am I right? Right now, also, right now also, you must be having a challenge of how to achieve my target. Is that true? Every time we fight, I mean, I worked as a salesman, I know it so well, that every time you are carrying that ta target, and one target is as it automatically, another target will come, which is always higher. So that's why we have to be focused on target. But one target is that, another target? Or another target is your target customer, target segment. You must do with your target segment. Then another target? Target is making customer happy. Not achieving your one goal only, but making customer happy. If you carry these three targets, it is going to help. I am running out of time. I'll go very quickly. Collaborate with buyers. I mean, you should really collaborate with the buyers. Then be flexible. Uh, that flexibility really help you to flourish in life. Be your pleasures. Okay, so this is what is required. And then start small. We always talk about the big accounts, big things. But start small. This is going to grow tomorrow. You have to be sure, I mean, you have to be informed about that. So, three most common sales mistakes, not listening to the buyer. As a salesperson, we talk, 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 talk. But active listening is the key for becoming a good salesperson. So I really appreciate all of you. You are so active listener right now. I'm really thankful to all of you. Then, not asking for order. You're afraid that. The guy, I mean, they're afraid of asking for debts. And then the, you are you you offered that if they reject, then I'm going to lose. Then you keep on telling stories, but not asking for the order. Please ask. Shall I deliver it? I mean, bill cartoon. Sundu bare. Ami tu gordon or doram so. Okay. Then forgetting to sell existing customer. Agi na mai liyukura paila bani banana. Okay. So days ahead are not easy, and it was never before too. Hamla laksa aza gar so tari aza matra ena. So that is why we have to be flexible. We have to be flexible. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Kishore Dungana. As he's on stage, first we'll present him the token of appreciation. Thank you for so much for taking out time and all the insights. I'm going to just wrap up and share something on it. But moving ahead, I'd like to call upon Mr. Mohan Oja, Chairperson, Sales Summit Steering Committee, to please do the honors as we present um, Dr. 
Dungana this uh, token of appreciation, and we're really thankful for your time and insight. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you so much. Rwale share gonu bhaste ye kura harulai se mat tapa haru maj. I'm just going to make a summary of whatever I've felt. Tapa haru ko inputs aze hai ola, but the inputs that I've felt, I'm going to share it to you. Wali emphasize gonu boyo, cause every sales is something that we keep doing in a day-to-day basis. Tar ami ki sell gor song banne je amru main priority ho, and hopefully we know what we are selling. That was a very great start of how he started the session. Tar atyo session lagate wali har ek industry ko inclined. Decline and insights are present. The incline decline state, we have realized that higher education industry is a declining phase. So maybe, we uh, incline the support what further steps we could take forward is something we need to look for. Because is something that we will hear today for the entire day as well. Rasang um, I think few of the things that he actually mentioned, which I really felt important was, we need to focus on our values. Hami value like kasari focus korsong, trust kasari build korsong hamro, pahilo step unsa. Before we sell or get into the sale force, the first thing is how we build that trust, how we build our value. Hami ki sell gori rohe korsong hamro, pahilo prathamik ta se honu parsa banne. Zun euta value wahale share gonu ba, I think to ekdami important pani tha bane, song song Okay. Collaborating and today is a great chance. I mean, different different industry, but I need to competitive uh, nature. Banda, but collaborative nature would be really helpful for everyone working together. Ra or Koyota Kura, which I really found very important, is starting very small. Hamili Surat Garda Tai to Sano Kinanos, Surat Igdemi Sano Zastolaksa, Taratele Goreko Hamila impact Igdemi Tulu Rup Mapashi, Uta Tulu Rup Lira Gonsa, which we never know, like growth sellers as well in this 15 years. And I think 